Uh, hello and welcome to the Congressional App Challenges kickoff event for our Back to School webinar series. Uh, this is Building Great Apps with Apple. My name is Joe Lessy and I am the director of the Congressional App Challenge. Uh, in the Congressional App Challenge, Congress has created the largest series of concurrent coding competitions anywhere in the world. And it's students that you, like you that make this incredible event possible. Last year, the Congressional App Challenge uh, was held for over 10,000 students across 48 states, and we're expecting even greater turnout with this year's competition. Eligible students can register and submit their apps through October 19th uh, at the Congressional App Challenge website. Uh, and now I'd like to uh, present a special message from some of the Congressional App Challenge's biggest fans. This is Congressman French Hill. I represent Little Rock, Arkansas, Arkansas's second congressional district. Welcome to this year's Congressional App Challenge. I'm so proud to be the co-chairman of the Congressional App Challenge this year because it allows us to promote through high school students all over the country the importance of technology, coding, and innovation. Despite social distancing and remote learning, we hope that you'll put together a team and come up with a great idea to compete in this year's challenge. I'm particularly proud here in Arkansas that we've had good competitions in all four congressional districts. So we're looking for that kind of competition in all 50 states. I hope you'll participate in the Congressional App Challenge this fall. Remember, you're the future. We need your leadership, your innovation, and your coding success. So best wishes, join us in the challenge, and I look forward to the competition. Congresswoman Barbara Lee, and I represent California's beautiful 13th Congressional District. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you all to this year's Congressional App Challenge. As students, yes, you are our future leaders in technology and STEM. This challenge is an opportunity to show your creativity and your talent, especially in computer science and in coding. Coding is an incredibly important skill that can be used to create positive change, change in your community and in the world. Through coding, you can address a range of issues from healthcare to economic inequality. I encourage all students in ninth through 12th grades to participate. Create the app that you think the world needs. Anything is possible. I can't wait to see what you all create this year. Good luck. Hello, this is Congressman David Price calling all middle school students, high school students, would you like to learn a new skill? Would you like to develop something that's useful to the community? Well, then we hope you'll sign up for the Congressional App Challenge. You can participate on your own or you can participate in teams of two, three, up to four. It's easy. You take these steps. You think of a problem that needs solving. You create an app that helps solve it. You make a short video explaining the app and then you submit it to our competition by October 19th. The Congressional App Challenge has tools to launch your project, so check it out. We can help you get going. Visit congressionalappchallenge.us to sign up and learn more. We hope you'll uh, get into this. It'll be exciting, and we'll see you at the Congressional App Challenge. Thank you. Hello, I'm Congressman Vicente Gonzalez. I'm here to invite you to participate in the 2020 Congressional App Challenge. If you're a high school or middle school student in the 15th District of Texas, this is your opportunity to build a unique app and delve into the science and technology fields. You can show off your technology skills and innovative spirit. Together, let's bring your creative ideas to Congress. Good luck. Hi, I'm Andre Yanko, Under Secretary of Commerce for Intellectual Property and Director of the United States Patent and Trademark Office. 
Welcome to the 2020 Congressional App Challenge. The USPTO has been supporting the Congressional App Challenge since 2015. We participate in the annual House of Code Awards event and develop IP and app workshops specifically to help you, the Congressional App Challenge participants. This year, the USPTO will host a virtual workshop on September 17th in collaboration with the Congressional App Challenge for students who register early for the App Challenge. At the workshop, we will teach you how to protect your inventions so that you can market, license, and sell your app creations. You are America's innovative future, and I strongly encourage you to continue to invent and develop new solutions to real-world problems as you pursue STEM degrees and careers, grow as leaders in computer science, and use your unique talents and ingenuity to help people and contribute to America's robust innovation economy. Best of luck to you in your app development and in all of your future endeavors. Hi, this is Congressman Mark Takano, uh, encouraging all of the young people in the 41st Congressional District to participate in the 2020 Congressional App Challenge. Creating apps can be fun, creating apps can teach you a lot about coding uh, and technology, creating apps uh, might even make you rich. Um, I was just organizing all of my iPhone apps into little folders and I was thinking, gee, I really could use an app that would help me figure out what to get my mom for her birthday coming up at the end of the month. Um, you don't have to make an app that does that. I'm sorry to make, uh, encouraging to be in a part of this contest um, about uh, my mom, but uh, I do wish you luck. I hope you uh, enter the contest and uh, uh, happy coding. Hi, I'm Kim Schreier, representative from Washington's 8th Congressional District, and I am just delighted to invite you to participate in this year's Congressional App Challenge. Uh, this is a time for students to submit apps, and it's a beautiful combination of uh, technology and arts, and it really highlights STEAM education, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Last year, we had submissions ranging from one to help you with which animal to choose as a pet to another one that had to do with tracking exercise. And our winner, uh, his app was called Breathe AI, and that was Ethan Price from Ellensburg. And his used artificial intelligence to help doctors read x-rays and diagnose pneumonia. I can't wait to see what their Sears students do, and I look forward to seeing your apps. Thanks. Hey everybody, it's Congresswoman Lauren Underwood. Just wanted to wish you good luck as you participate in the Congressional App Challenge. We know that computer science and development and coding is so important for the United States to remain a global leader um, in our economy. And I know that the apps that you're creating are solving incredible problems. You're bringing such creativity and innovation to the space. I really just can't believe uh, what you're designing and can't wait to see the finished products. Thanks so much and keep at it. Bye. Hi, this is Congresswoman Xochitl Torres Small, proudly representing New Mexico's second congressional district. I know this summer has looked different from what many of us expected it to be. I want to thank you for your hard work to finish out the school year and for the many sacrifices you continue to make to protect our community during this public health crisis. As we get closer to back to school, I'm excited to share that the Congressional App Challenge has officially launched. I'm looking forward to seeing middle and high school students from across central and southern New Mexico put their knowledge and creativity to the test. Do you want to create a game? Use an app to solve a problem. There is no limit to what you can create. Get started today and register at congressionalappchallenge.us. Please reach out to my office with any questions and I look forward to seeing what you come up with. Hey, I'm Congressman Bruce Westerman. I'm gonna encourage all the students in Arkansas's fourth congressional district. If you're in middle school or high school, you got an opportunity to compete in our congressional app challenge. You can do this by yourself or you can team up with three of your friends as there can be four on a team to compete in the congressional app challenge. We're gonna pick a winner from Arkansas's fourth district and you get an opportunity to travel to DC 
to present your app in the national uh, contest up there in Washington. So if you've got an interest in computers, you know how to develop apps, or even if you don't, learn how to do it and enter one in the 4th District Congressional App Challenge. I'm Congressman Bruce Westerman, and I look forward to seeing you. Uh, be sure and get your application in by October 19th. Good morning, STEM students. I'm Congressman Charlie Crist of Florida's 13th Congressional District. I want to congratulate you on participating in the Congressional App Challenge. As you know, computer skills in this age are so vitally important. I want to thank you for participating. I want to wish you the best of luck. Thank you for what you're doing, and God bless you all. Hey everybody, this is Congressman Colin Allred from the 32nd District of Texas. I'm so excited to help kick off this year's Congressional App Challenge. The Congressional App Challenge is a great opportunity for students to showcase their creativity, their teamwork, and of course their coding skills. And last year we saw so many great original apps submitted by some incredibly talented teams of students. And this year I encourage you to grab your friends and join up and submit your own app. I'm so proud of the initiative and the innovation that our students have shown every single year. And I can't wait to see what you come up with this year. So go get them. Okay, so let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, I'd now like to introduce Katie Levdahl from Apple. Uh, Apple has long been a champion and supporter of the Congressional App Challenge. Uh, and their team is here today to speak to app challengers about the fast growing app economy and the tools and techniques that produce great apps. So with that, I'll hand it over to you, Katie. Great, thanks, Joe. Let me just pull up my deck. Great, hi everybody. Um, I'm Katie and I'm part of the Apple education team. Um, our team focuses on how to prepare students like yourself to be the next leaders and innovators in this ever-changing world. We're deeply impressed by the creative ways that you're using technology to solve problems that you care about. And whether this is your first time participating in the Congressional App Challenge, or if you're returning from previous years, we can't wait to see what you guys come up with. To help support your journey, on our talk today, um, we'll look at some opportunities in the app economy. We'll talk about the qualities of great apps, and then we'll look at some free resources from Apple that you can use to make your app project the best that it can be. I'm also joined today by some of my colleagues, Owen, Kim, and Andrea. We're here to answer any questions that you have. So please be sure to use the Q&A function as I'm going through my presentation to ask any questions that come up for you. You'll also notice that Kim will be sharing some links in the chat box. So make sure that you grab hold of the ones that you find the most interesting to you. So let's get started. When the App Store was introduced in 2008 with just 500 apps, it ignited a cultural, social, and economic phenomenon that changed how people live. It changed how we work, how we play, how we travel, and so much more. Since then, the App Store has created a safe space for users of all ages to get the very best apps. And it's created a vibrant app economy for developers of all sizes from all over the world to thrive. With 100% of Fortune 500 companies deploying iOS across their workforce and nearly all of them doing in-house development, app developers have never been in more demand. We're really excited that all of you are considering the app design journey with us too. But we also know that it's not just about jobs in the app economy. In a world driven by mobility, it's also about the essential skills that we need to survive in this new code driven world, no matter what career you pursue. At Apple, we believe that every, everyone should have the impact to make an opportunity to change the world. So whether that means that you're just getting started learning to code or you've had experience up to now, um, this is something that you have available to you and that the Congressional App Challenge can help you with. Give me just a minute.
So let's talk a little bit about Swift. Swift is great for app development. It's a powerful and intuitive open source programming language that's as easy to use as it is powerful to learn. Swift was divided, de designed by Apple engineers with educators at the drawing board. And what that means is that we really took an intention of how can we help support students like you um, learn how to code with a powerful language like Swift. And it's also really popular. According to Stack Overflow's developer survey from last year, Swift was among the most loved programming languages. And when you learn Swift, it has direct connections to the real world, to today's world built on mobility and driven by the app economy. There's over 450,000 apps on the App Store, many of them using Swift. And while a relatively new language, Swift is powering many of the apps that you use every day. So now I wanna switch gears a little bit and talk not just about how to make good apps, but how to make great apps. Um, at each year at the Apple Worldwide Developer Conference, we announce the winners of the Apple Design Awards. And what I'm going to share with you are some essential qualities that we find in those apps. Now, this is by no means an exhaustive list of everything you should consider, but it's some of the top things that our team thought you guys should be thinking about as you develop your apps. The first one has to do with innovative apps. Great apps are innovative. This means that they provide a new and superior solution to what could be thought of as an old problem. So let's take a look at two quick examples. The first is HomeCourt. HomeCourt is an app that uses your iPhone camera to help you become a better basketball player. And who doesn't want that, right? Um, as you can see, HomeCourt tracks your shots and tabulates your makes and misses. With this app, you get access to the kind of information that you wouldn't otherwise have if you were just shooting hoops. It doesn't require any special equipment, no like smart ball or extra sensors. It just requires your iPhone and it uses machine learning and a bunch of smarts to allow you to simply lean your phone on your water bottle or something else around um, and start shooting. Another great example of this is quick math. Innovative apps can be extremely influential. Quick Map was first re released about six years ago and it's designed to help children improve their math skills by simply drawing answers to math problems right on the screen. Let's check that out. Quick Math took handwriting recognition technology into the education space and made math more intuitive and more fun. And this notion of scribbling on the screen without the bounds of a text input box, this feels so natural and is characteristics of a huge spectrum of apps nowadays. So as you're thinking about your design, I would encourage you to include um, cutting edge things like this. The next element are designing apps that are inviting. This means that, that they have an attractive design and leave a great first impression on users. First impressions begin in the app store with the app's description and screenshots. They're then reinforced with your app's icon. And then again, when you launch the app, as people be begin to explore and discover that, in addition to looking good and being descriptive, it also launches quickly, it's responsive, and it gets things done. Duolingo provides a great example of that. On first launch, Duolingo asks you about your language proficiency. The use of the cartoon bird here is a really nice touch because it's super friendly and approachable. It's like literally waving its wing to say hi. Um, and the interface is very conversational. 
and the options are clear. So you can see if you're a beginner or not a beginner. And they use the second line to give you more description about what that means. This UI really speaks to you like the human that you are. Um, that's another element to be always remembering to think about how do we bring the humanity into our user interface. It's also important to note what's not here. Um, they didn't add unnecessary text like welcome to Duolingo, hey there, let me help you get started. They kept it super clean and simple. Let's talk a little bit about intuitive design. This means that when people use your, your app, they know exactly what to do. You minimize the use of onboarding and tutorials. And a super good pro tip here is that platform conventions are your friend. If your app matches what your users are previously used to doing, it will feel familiar and easier to master that will make it be more intuitive. Intuitive apps are also simple and focused. They do just a few things and they do them very well. Nothing makes an app more difficult to use when it's overloaded with lots of functions that you kind of need, but maybe not really, or when the interface is cluttered with controls and status information. We as, as designers and engineers need to resist the temptation to keep adding in more and more functionality. Remember to stay focused and keep it simple. A really good example of that is I translate voice. And I'm going to show you um, a quick demo of how that works. Yakınlarda bir metro durağı var. It was completely stripped down to the bare essentials. You just tap, hold, and speak. So our fourth criteria is thinking about apps that are inclusive. Being inclusive means that everyone, regardless of their language, location, or physical ability, should be able to use apps successfully. This is a really important value to us at Apple, and we have taken great attention and made great progress into designing apps that can use some of our special accessibility features. I wanna share a couple of those with you today to consider as you're developing your apps. Because we all know that technology plays a really powerful role in people's lives, and we want to consider how can we make our app available to everyone. There's a, a lot of built-in accessibility features that you could use in your app design and development, including accessibility APIs, developer tools. iOS provides an extraordinary opportunity to, to go deeper in this area. Award-winning features for this include switch control, which allows for users with limited mobility to use your app with ability switches and other adaptive devices. And it also includes VoiceOver, the revolutionary screen reader for blind and low vision users. Um, let's take a look on about how that works. Washington, mostly cloudy, 82 degrees. First day, partly cloudy, high 84, low 66. Hourly forecasts. Now, mostly cloudy, 82 degrees, 3 p.m. Mostly cloudy, 82 degrees. 4 p.m., partly cloudy, 84 So you can just imagine how revolutionary that would be for someone of low vision or who is blind to be able to have an app read read to them. Um, voiceover is a great feature for you to be considering in your app design. Okay, so these are just a few of the qualities to keep in mind. Um, we also want to make sure that you guys feel supported as part of a larger community. Um, this is a, a shot from um, a Swift student challenge that Apple hosted as part of the Worldwide Developer Conference earlier this summer. And what we saw there was so inspiring to us because students were developing incredible apps about how to prepare for pandemics, reduce carbon footprints, and, and so much more. There was over 350 winners from 41 countries um, and I think Tim summed it up best when he said here, it's amazing to see 
how students are dreaming big and changing the world. Um, we know that you guys have incredible potential to really change the world and we're super excited to um, support you on that journey. So now I'm gonna go into some resources that are available for you guys. Um, the, whilst the first has to do with learning Swift, which is an easy language to learn, but we've also created some resources um, to help both schools and students learn Swift programming language, language, which is included with the X programming, Xcode programming environment on the Mac. Um, so some of you may be familiar with um, this Xcode screen that you see here, um, and others um, may be just getting excited about learning the Xcode environment, um, but it's an incredible way to use Swift code to design um, and prototype apps of your own creation. Um, the Develop in Swift curriculum and its other resources can be found on the Teaching Code web, web page, which is what I'm showing you a screenshot of here. Um, many of you are, may already be familiar with this, but I'm also excited to share some of the new things that we just launched last month. Develop in Swift provides this practical way to begin exploring app design and development all the way to be building a fully functional app of your own design. A great place to start is with the Exploration Student Guide. All of these books are available free on the Apple Bookstore. Um, and help you really dive into Swift and Xcode um, through a, a lot of activities and engaging app design challenges. For the educators in the audience, there are supporting teacher guides to help deepen engagement with aspiring app developers. Apple works with educators and schools worldwide to help students learn Swift. The Develop in Swift program overall offers comprehensive resources all the way from an AP um, advanced placement curriculum um, through industry recognized certification. So if it's not already offered at your school, take a look at that. And then if there's one resource that I want to make sure you guys have available to just get started building out your incredibly creative app designs, it's the App Design Journal. So grab this link from the chat when Kim posts it, because um, this is a great place for you to start. The App Design Journal helps you take your idea into a prototype, either using Keynote to illustrate your idea, or all the way up through the Xcode simulator when you've added um, code to support your app design. It's built on the app design cycle that professional app developers use as well. Um, this is an iterative process, so you might find yourself coming back to this app design journal um, as you continue to refine your, refine your ideas and make it even better and better. Um, when people go through this process and they use something like the app design, we find that their apps are um, ex exemplars of the criteria that we went over earlier. So the winners of the Apple Design Awards like really used this type of process to help get their app designs and their app products to the place where they think um, makes them really great. Um, I wanted to call out storyboarding in particular. I'll give you just a couple little tips. Storyboarding is a wonderful, um, easy to do process that can help get what's in your head out onto paper um, and communicate your ideas. Um, the other component of app design and development that really helps get turn your ideas into reality um, is learning how to appropriately pitch your app. So how do you communicate your ideas and the impact of your app in a way um, that helps people understand um, and helps people support your ideas. So to give us a little bit more insight into that, um, I'm going to show a quick video from our colleague Nia, um, who's going to give us some tips and tricks on um, pitching your app. Hello, and welcome to the Develop in Swift video, Pitching Your App. I'm Nia on the Apple Education team, and in this video, we will explore how best to convey your vision to others with a truly great app pitch. Let's jump right in. 
Unfortunately, most apps don't market themselves. If you want your app to be successful, you're going to have to let other people know about it. Marketing is all about finding the right people, those that will want your app and those who'll champion it, then communicating your vision to them. This, of course, is where the pitch comes in. When preparing for your pitch, draft a list of talking points and consider the interest of your audience as you build out each point. A pitch typically includes a demo of your app prototype and a presentation showcasing the full plan and thinking behind it. Begin with the problem you're trying to solve and a short description of how your app will make a difference. Be sure to highlight key points from your app specs and note the features you'll want to emphasize. It's always a good idea to create a demo script that shows off all these key features. Remember to think beyond simply building and publishing your app. Include how you're going to distribute and market it as well. Imagine global distribution and consider variables that could impact how well your product will work in different markets. If you like, create a keynote presentation to support your pitch. Keep the slides simple and be sure the style matches your app. Of course, you'll want to rehearse your pitch and it's important to seek feedback from mentors or critical friends. Have them take on personas of members of your target audience. They should ask questions and note the strengths and weaknesses of your presentation. Once you have all the feedback, review your pitch and settle on a final script. While you might not enjoy it, it's a good idea to film yourself rehearsing. Practice until your pitch feels smooth and comfortable. And remember, when the pitch is over, that's when the real fun begins. Hopefully taking these steps under consideration will put you and your amazing app on the path to becoming the next great digital innovation. For the Apple Education team, I'm Nia, and thank you for watching this video on pitching your app. Great. So hopefully that was helpful as you think about ways that you'll pitch your app design and ideas um, back to your congressional representatives at home as part of the challenge. A cut, one more super important resource to share um, is the Apple Developer Program. So here at the Apple Developer website, it's a great place to find a bunch of different resources that can help you. Um, I wanted to call out the design section, which includes Apple's human interface guideline templates. Um, those can be really simple or really helpful. Um, there's also templates for prototyping your app. Um, there's a ton of documentation, sample code, and helpful videos on topics from building your first app to making your app smarter with machine learning and vision. Um, and then the developer forums are a great place to get support from other developers, um, as well as Apple engineers are also on there to help you out. And if you're interested in putting your app up on the App Store, um, note that the Apple Developer Program um, includes um, a free fee waiver for schools and nonprofit um, organizations. So um, on the apple.com slash support site is where you can find information about how to um, apply for the Apple Developer Program and then get the support that you need um, to post your app to the App Store. Um, so with that, um, I'm gonna bring back the team and I wanted to share one other thing um, recognizing that you all are part of a worldwide community of young developers who are creating apps that do um, incredible things. And as part of that community, um, we wanted to share with you um, the guidelines and sort of behind the scenes tips and tricks on how to customize your Memoji to include a Mac with special customized stickers for that. So if that's something that you're interested in doing and seems fun to you, um, grab the link that Kim has put in the chat, um, which we posted some instructions up to, to help you do that. Um, it includes the, our, our favorite, the Swift sticker um, that we think really helps to um, bring some personality to your Mac. Um, and we hope that you have fun being creative and really customizing this to the way that um, helps share your personality. So with that, I'll just remind you guys to keep dreaming big and know that we at Apple are, are behind you and are cheering you on all the way. Um, we know that it only takes one idea to really change the world. 
And we're so excited that you're participating in the Congressional App Challenge because it's programs like these that can help you discover that one idea. Um, and we're super excited to see what you guys come up with. Um, I think I'll, I'll bring in Kim and Owen and Andrea now um, so we can have a, a little conversation and see what questions came up. Thank you guys. Great. Thanks so much, Katie. Um, we've gotten some great questions in the chat. So why don't I kick this off? Um, Abraham asks a great question. Can someone as young as middle school learn Swift? Do you want to answer that, Katie? Sure. Um, absolutely. So there's a great app, which I think you should check out called Swift Playgrounds. It's an iPad app and it will help introduce you to the language of Swift um, using fun uh, puzzles and games. And then as you get more familiar with the Swift language, definitely jump over to develop in Swift, check out explorations, um, and also check out that app design journal because it's a great place to start to realize what elements of code that you're most interested in learning through the app design process. So absolutely, we can't wait for you to get started. Great, um, another question is, what is an iOS app? Oh, that is a wonderful question for Owen, I think. You wanna take this one, Owen? Uh, sure, an iOS app is an app that is built to run on iPhone natively. Um, and the best way of creating iPhone apps is to use Xcode and the iOS SDK uh, on a Mac. So speaking of Owen, we've gotten lots of questions about whether you need a Mac in order to use Xcode. Yeah, so Xcode is a tool that's produced by Apple for writing uh, code in Swift for all of our platforms, and it runs natively on Mac. So it, it is uh, something that is designed to run on the Mac. Great. Um, so we got some questions about how can students stay connected with Apple? Um, I can say one quick way on Twitter, if you, if you follow Apple um, education, you'll get the latest and greatest on everything that we're doing on coding. And that is at Apple EDU. I'll also put that in the chat. But Andrea, do you wanna talk a minute about the worldwide developer um, student scholarships. Absolutely. So every year, usually sometime in June, we have our Worldwide Developers Conference and we have a student scholarship opportunity for that, which is a great opportunity. Um, and for that, you have to create a project um, similar to the Congressional App Challenge, except in recent years, it's been a Swift Playground. So another reason to learn the Swift Playgrounds app and see what you can do in there. Um, and students get to come um, to the developers conference and go to sessions with Apple engineers, go to labs with Apple engineers, um, and there's lots of follow up after that. So I would encourage you to keep an eye on developer.apple.com and, and apply next year. And Andrea, um, you're in our um, developer relations group. Could you talk a little bit about the fee waiver um, that Katie mentioned for students and um, does that apply to um, students attending, is it tied to a student attending a school or is it for any student? And um, also, do you have to be 18 to code an app? So you don't have to be 18 to code an app. You have to be 18 though to join the, developer, the Apple developer program. Um, so it's kids who are younger than 18 will often work in tandem with a parent. Um, so the parent will be the one to sign up for the account and work with um, their child on the app. But, but it does have to be an adult, um, someone over 18, 18 or over, who signs up for the Apple Developer Program. Um, there is a fee waiver in place for schools and government institutions. So that's another way that a student could get involved in an Apple Developer Program account. Um, Katie or Owen, is there more to say about that? I would just add that if you um, have teachers or educators who are helping to support you in learning to code, um, make sure that they're aware of this too, because they'll probably um, be happy to help support you with an account, um, but make sure that they're aware that that opportunity is there. We can let our okay, teachers 
Oh, I was going to say, we'll let our teacher network know about that as well. So many of the students who are tuning in today, um, we'll get in touch with your teachers and hopefully they'll have that ready for you uh, when you get in school. So Joe, we've gotten some questions about the app challenge itself. Um, two questions I see. Um, one is, do you have to um, build an iOS app? And the answer is no for this challenge. Um, but I, I know that last year's challenge, I understand that um, lots of the winners were built in Swift, which we were, uh, those of us at Apple were very excited about. And then the other question is, are, by attending this webinar, are people automatically registered for the app challenge? Yeah, so those are great questions. Um, I'll take the second one first. Um, uh, registering for this webinar does not necessarily register you for the Congressional App Challenge. Um, to register for the Congressional App Challenge, you have to go through our application portal, uh, which is located at congressionalappchallenge.us. Um, and if you have any questions about whether or not you've registered, if you're not sure that you've already registered, feel free to reach out to our team. Uh, we'd be happy to, to see if you're already in the system or get you set up with a profile. Um, in terms of um, what is eligible to be submitted for the Congressional App Challenge, um, we, uh, what we like to say is that uh, students can code in any language, on any platform, and on any topic. Um, so we keep the Congressional App Challenge really open-ended, uh, and that allows students to pursue their interests um, and their passions and put together an app that really speaks to them and inspires them, um, hopefully helps their community. So another question that we got um, is related to the challenges. What does someone do if their Congress um, person is not participating? Yeah, so this year we've got 303 members of Congress uh, signed up for the Congressional App Challenge. So that's just over two thirds of the House of Representatives. Um, if you live, uh, if you reside or attend school in a district that is hosting a Congressional App Challenge, then you're eligible to participate in the challenge. Uh, if you do not reside or attend school in one of those districts, um, reach out to our team. Uh, the deadline is just passed for members of Congress to sign up to host App Challenges, um, but if we have students in the district who are interested, we can typically make an exception so long as the member of Congress is interested in hosting. Um, it is something they need to opt into, but often when they have students with interest in the district, uh, they're very likely to sign up. So if you don't see your member signed up, please reach out to our team. We can connect you with them um, and we'll do our best to get them signed up so that you can compete. And another question is um, if there's, and I think you might have an FAQ on your site about this, if the school's in a different congressional district from where you live. Yeah, um, so if you're competing by yourself, that would mean that you would be eligible in either district. And in that case, it's up to you which district you'd like to compete in. Um, if you do have a teammate, um, or you can have up to four teammates, um, that does change the math a little bit about who is eligible. And a lot of that has to do with the way the competition was set up um, by the Committee on House Administration and the Committee on Ethics. Um, but sort of a rough rule is that um, half of the team needs to either reside or attend school in the district that you're competing in. So if you've got yourself and two friends and two of you live in the district and one lives outside the district, you would be eligible to compete. So um, Katie, Peter asks, um, what are good a good resource for designing the kind of front end of a map to on the design piece. You want to talk a little bit about the design journal again for that? Yeah, that's a great question, Peter. So I would direct any design related resources over to the app design journal, because what that will help you do is one, it will kickstart your thinking around the design process right away. Um, and it gives you um, a, some easy to sort of like fill out um, questions and answers that will get you thinking in that way of like how do you address that sort of front end UI elements of your app design. Um, it will also help you create that into uh, either a keynote prototype where you'll have slides that illustrate that um, or if you are already over in Xcode you can use the Xcode simulator to, to show and bring your ideas to life. And Katie, um, so the app design journal is a great place. 
Sorry, yeah, and I'll add really quickly that there's a very in-depth resource on the developer um, website for Apple that details the human interface guidelines for all of our platforms, and that's a really good resource as well to start out to understand what the best practices are for app design on iOS and other platforms. And Andrea just posted that in the chat. Well, what I posted is like sort of templates and, and other resources that you can use once you're ready to get started with your design. Um, another great resource. Hey, Kim, do you mind if I pop in and answer a couple? Uh, I think we're almost good. We're finished almost. Oh, okay. Just a few more questions. Um, uh, question is um, how can um, educators get trained on Apple's coding resources? Katie, do you wanna answer that? Sure, that is a, an excellent question. And as part of the Develop and Swift curriculum and resources that I shared in my slides, um, we also just announced a free um, online professional learning experience that's hosted on the Canvas learning management system. Um, so Kim, if you have that link or Owen, if someone could share that link where um, on, you can register for free, it's an asynchronous online experience and you'll get access to tons of videos like the ones that I showed um, and also more um, in-depth videos around how do you solve some of the more sophisticated Xcode playgrounds. Um, and learn from Apple experts on how to prepare. That will get you, uh, the educator, ready for teaching the explorations curriculum, um, the AP CSP curriculum, um, or leading a Swift coding club. Um, so that's a great place to start. There you'll also see um, contact information for our Apple professional learning specialists that are offering um, free virtual coaching. So you can sign up and get a three half hour, half hour um, experience to get some sort of like one-on-one -on -one, um, advice on how to um, use professional learning to support you. Um, so there's an email address on that page too that you can use to do that. Okay, great. Yeah, Owen, if you could put that in the chat about the, the um, PL course, that'd be great. Okay, so um, I think we, uh, the final question, Joe, is about the date again, if you could, just remind everybody about when they have to submit their apps by. Yeah, um, so uh, students can register and submit their apps for this year's Congressional App Challenge through October 19th. And so um, we encourage students to register, sign up early to make sure you get all the updates from our end. We'll be including some great information um, from folks like you guys at Apple to help the students uh, get their apps across the line. Um, then October 19th is the deadline for them to submit. Great. Well, we're all of us at Apple are very uh, grateful to um, have this opportunity to present these resources to you, and we wish you the best of luck. All right. Um, well, I want to thank you guys so much for, for joining us today. Um, thank you, Owen, Andrea, Kim, and Katie uh, for the awesome presentation, and thank you to all of you who joined uh, the webinar. Um, we wanted to um, just quickly mention we're doing another webinar next week. And so if you haven't already registered for it, that should be great as well. Um, you can find more information about that on our website. Uh, we'll also be sending out resources uh, from Apple. So if you want to follow up with anything that you heard about today, um, if you've got any questions about some of those links that Kim was sending out throughout the presentation, we'll make sure that we send those uh, to everybody who attended today so that you have an opportunity to follow up and build a great app using Swift for this year's Congressional App Challenge. Um, Kim mentioned this earlier, but we had a huge percentage of our winners last year from the Congressional App Challenge code in Swift. Um, and so uh, it's a great way to make sure that you're putting together um, a really compelling, um, really beautiful app uh, that will really impress your member of Congress and maybe get you a chance to join us in Washington, DC for uh, our House of Code reception. Um, so with that, uh, thank you again to everybody who joined us, uh, and we look forward to seeing many of you next week for our next webinar. Uh, have a great evening.